Episode number 156. What the devil, I say again! exclaimed the jailer, left with his wife. How many more? The jailer's wife, being provided with no answer to the question, merely replied, One must have patience, my dear. Three turnkeys, who entered responsive to a bell she rang, echoed the sentiment, and one added, For the love of liberty, which sounded in that place like an inappropriate conclusion. The prison of La Force was a gloomy prison, dark and filthy, and with a horrible smell of foul sleep in it. Extraordinary how soon the noisome flavor of imprisoned sleep becomes manifest in all such places that are ill cared for. In secret, too, grumbled the jailer, looking at the written paper, as if I was not already full to bursting. He stuck the paper on a file, in an ill humor, and Charles Darnay awaited his further pleasure for half an hour, sometimes, pacing to and fro in the strong arched room, sometimes, resting on a stone seat, in either case detained to be imprinted on the memory of the chief, and his subordinates. Come, said the chief, at length taking up his keys, come with me, emigrant. Through the dismal prison twilight, his new charge accompanied him by corridor and staircase, many doors clanging and locking behind them, until they came into a large, low, vaulted chamber, crowded with prisoners of both sexes. The women were seated at a long table, reading and writing, knitting, sewing, and embroidering. The men were for the most part standing behind their chairs, or lingering up and down the room. In the instinctive association of prisoners with shameful crime and disgrace, the newcomer recoiled from this company. But the crowning unreality of his long unreal ride, was, their all at once rising to receive him, with every refinement of manner known to the time, and with all the engaging graces, and courtesies of life. So strangely clouded were these refinements by the prison manners, and gloom, so spectral did they become in the inappropriate squalor, and misery through, which they were seen, that Charles Darnay seemed to stand in a company of the dead. Ghost Saul. The ghost of beauty, the ghost of stateliness, the ghost of elegance, the ghost of pride, the ghost of frivolity, the ghost of wit, the ghost of youth, the ghost of mage, all waiting their dismissal from the desolate shore, all turning on him eyes that were changed by the death they had died in coming there. It struck him motionless. The jailer standing at his side, and the other jailers moving about, who would have been well enough as to appearance in the ordinary exercise of their functions, looked so extravagantly coarse contrasted with sorrowing mothers and blooming daughters, who were there, with the apparitions of the coquette, the young beauty, and the mature woman delicately bred, that the inversion of all experience, and likelihood which the scene of shadows presented, was heightened to its utmost. Surely, ghost soul. Surely, the long unreal ride some progress of disease that had brought him to these gloomy shades. In the name of the assembled companions in misfortune, said a gentleman of courtly appearance and address, coming forward, I have the honor of giving you welcome to La Force, and of condoling with you on the calamity that has brought you among us. May it soon terminate happily. It would be an impertinence elsewhere, but it is not so here, to ask your name and condition, 